What is up you guys, this is All Day Any Day 1 on the PS4 and I'm going to be giving you guys a Conan Exiles Beginner's Guide video for the PS4. So I did put maybe a few hundred hours into this game. I've played on an official server, unofficial server, and my own private server. So I kind of feel like I have a good gist about this whole game with the way the building works and farming and everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys the knowledge that I gained just from playing this and hope, you know, it helps you guys out. And I do know that there are other videos somewhere in YouTube where you can find beginner's guides. I haven't seen any, so I'm not exactly sure if I'll be having the same exact stuff that those people would have posted. But, you know, it is what it is. So we're going to go ahead and move on and start the video with the first thing. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is the menu options. So you have online and single player co-op. So with online, you have the option to go to PvP or PvE. And those of you that don't know, PvP means player versus player. And then PvE is player versus environment or player versus enemies. But with PvP servers, you have the option to do official servers and unofficial. Same with the PvE servers. With a PvP unofficial servers, it really depends on the admin settings. Same with the PvE, it all depends on the admin settings. So, if you're playing an official on PvP, you can fight anyone at any given time, but you can only raid players' bases at a certain time of the day. If you're playing on unofficial, it depends on the admin settings, like I said. So sometimes they can have it set to where it's 24-7, raiding, PvP, and grieving. You can pretty much have it where if you have items on you, someone just goes up to you and kills you, they can go to your base and bomb it. Or the admin can set it to where players can't lose the items on them or players can't be raided at any time of the day. And then with PvE, you can pretty much have it to where P it's like PvE-C, where it's player versus environment conflict or PvP, player versus player conflict. With PvE, you're just building and killing monsters with your friends pretty much it's a more relaxed um server i suppose but there are people who will troll as well especially in the official servers that will troll and try to um i guess spam they'll be spamming their sandstones and whatnot all over the map so i will i would watch out with all that and then the single player co-op so with single player and co-op you have the option to obviously play in a co-op with a friend or f up to four players in one match but the thing about that is everyone is going to be tethered to you so if you decide to teleport somewhere they will also be teleported to you if you decide to run all the way elsewhere they will have to they will teleport to where you are or f they be pulled to you if you're playing offline it's no different from the co-op except that you're not playing with friends or just playing by yourself and with uh, with the option of playing on single player co-op it's your own server so you do have admin options as well you can turn the admin options turn into a god you can fly around and build as much as you'd like to your heart's content pretty much and then for online you can also be an admin but you have to rent a server through their website and i believe most of the servers are sold out right now so you'd have to wait for that to be um, available. But it's pretty much the same exact thing as the single player co-op. You're just an admin and you control your own server. Players can join in, join out. You can put a password to your server so you don't get random people and whatnot. But that's pretty much it with the, the menu. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next thing that I'm gonna be talking about. All right, so the way that character customization works, it's it's pretty neat. So you can choose your male or female gender. So you can choose to be a female and then your race. It doesn't really matter too much, in my opinion. I never really noticed anything different um, except for like these are basically like your default character or default skins or whatever. You can either choose that or you can just go ahead and do the rest on your own. Religion, so the way religion works is it gives you a set religion automatically so you don't have to go out in the world and find these religions or if you don't want to have a religion and you want to kind of play it a little harder on yourself, 
then you can start with no religion. But the things that these religions do is they will give you different specializations when you learn them or when you craft their temples and whatnot. And then you can also use their god mode or their just their altars or gods, whatever you want to call it. So, for example, if you were to use the Mitra, you would summon a giant bronze statue avatar. That's what they call it, avatars, or gods, avatars. But you would summon a bronze statue and then they can pretty much break any base that you want to break if you're playing online. Otherwise, I wouldn't really see any reason to use an avatar if you're playing offline. And then you can also learn each religion, like I said, in the world. You can find every single religion without having to actually put any points into them when you're playing. And you have your voices, so you got strong, desperate, savage, and stoic. And then same thing for the males. And then the head options, you have one, two, three, four. You have seven options for your heads. And then a bunch of different hair options, which is pretty neat. Uh, I'll just go ahead and show you all the female hair styles. And then you can choose the color of your hair as well. When you choose the color, make sure you do select it by pressing X so you can keep it there. And let me choose. Ooh. And then you can choose your eyebrows as well. And then you have eyeshadows, lips, and then you have your facial details. You can choose. I mean, the customization isn't super in depth but you can still make your character look different from someone else's characters and then body features so you can choose how tall they are you can make them short or you can make them tall and then at physique i'm not going to show the nudity because of youtube purposes but you can choose to go partial or none so with none that means you're not going with the nudity but if you choose partial then you're just taking the top off if you're on the eu servers you can go full so you take off the top and the bottom and then the physique you can choose the physique to make them more ripped and more muscly like pretty much more well toned or you can turn the physique off and then make it to where they're just you know not i guess toned and then you can choose their endowment size if you're a male or breast size if you're female and that is pretty much it with the character customizations so like i said same thing with the male everything the female is all the same body features the only thing that's different is the endowment size the endowment size you do have to go with partial and then i don't know why endowment size isn't working actually oh because i have the server so if the server says that it's at no then you can't choose endowment size or anything but that's fine um, but that's pretty much it with this part of the video we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next so the next thing we're gonna be going over is your feet points and your crafting so the way crafting works is you do need to unlock them with your feet points and you'll get a certain amount of feet points you'll be getting 497 feet points so that you can unlock your pretty much your recipes so you have your construction, your decoration, survival, weapons, armor, and religions. And then you have their actual slots as well. So these are just like the categories that you would choose them from. So you don't need to just choose from here. You can press R1 and then you'll be able to see more options within these um, certain recipes. So the first one, which is the Apprentice Mason, you can choose these parts and then you can keep on choosing more. But the thing is, if you decide to, if you want to make, let's say, the Master Mason stuff with uh, black ice reinforced walls and all that, or just the black ice structures, you would need, if you want to make stairs, you would need to make the first stairs, or not make, but unlock the recipe for the first set of stairs, then the second tier of stairs, and then you'll be able to unlock the third tier of stairs. And then, same thing kind of works with the uh, weapons as well. But you don't necessarily need to unlock any of these weapons down here. You just unlock the weapon class, so warrior, in order to make the hilt maker. Because you need the hilt maker in order to make any of the t these weapons down here. Same goes for the shield. You just unlock defender, and then you can unlock the shield framer. But the thing is about the second, the, or yeah, the second perk of the weapons and stuff, is you won't be able to unlock them until you're level 60. So as you can see on the right side, it says level 60, 
above the requires and then for defender you only need to be level five and then for armor armor you unlock at level 10 you can start crafting your own armor at level 10 and then it progresses even more and more but for the exile epics you'll know when it's an epic gear because it'll have like a purple outline on the outside of the item or the gear you unlock these at level 60 so you will not be able to get these until level 60. Now there are some equipment, some I guess weapons and armor that you will not be able to unlock recipes within the actual feats. You would have to actually go out in the world and find these recipes from certain bosses or dungeons or whatever. And then you have your gods or your avatars, temples and all that. So the temples like I said earlier how in the main menu you cho you can choose to have start off with um, a religion or have no religion. If you start off with a religion, for example, mine was Mitra or Acolyte of Mitra, you get the first perk already, and then you can just unlock this. Some you can unlock the rest once you hit those levels. Now, with the other ones, you can either go around looking for them in the actual in just in the world. If you find them in the world, you unlock the first perk automatically but if you don't want to go look for them you can just unlock them by itself but it does cost 50 points so that's going to be quite an issue if you don't have a respect potion and you don't want to go look for them because it is it is pretty pricey it's 50 points and then also the last thing a lot of people don't realize or haven't realized is when you go to the magnifying glass all the way on the right for the tabs there is a pickaxe called Asheronian um, pick if I can find it I'm not exactly sure so these are the weapons and the hatchet so I did unlock it it's a black pickaxe so right, right here Asheronian tools so this is not in the actual tool slip slots or the weapon slots or anything you have to actually go all the way to the magnifying glass and look for the Asheronian tools so that way when you unlock this you well you have to be level 60 to unlock it but when you unlock it it's going to require um dang i actually forgot the materials what it requires but it does hit harder than star metal but the durability on the items and the, you know on the weapons is less so after you get all your feet situated you will have items that you can handcraft so the things you'll be able to handcraft are like the armor's bench, the artist's work table, pretty much anything that you need for crafting. And then you have all your structures too, your building structures. The only things you will not be able to craft are your weapons other than stone, the stone and your hunting bow are the only things you can craft by hand and explosives and um, stone arrows or flint head arrows, which is stone arrows. And um, it does tell you the materials that you do need as well. So don't expect to be able to just craft anything without the right amount of materials either. But uh, that's pretty much it with the crafting. It's not too bad. It's not too confusing. It's just you just got to make sure you have the materials and you can either craft it inside the crafting your handcraft. And if it's not there, then it's more than likely going to be in one of the work tables depending on what you're trying to build if you're trying to build something for example in like a weapon a certain weapon it'll tell you um actually no it doesn't tell you never mind <laughs> but it's pretty clear if you're gonna if you're trying to make a weapon you have to go to the blacksmith if you're trying to make armor you have to go to the armor um the armor crafting station and that's pretty much it we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next part all right, so with fast traveling, there pretty much is no actual fast travel in the game. If you have, if you're an admin or whatever, then you can press triangle to teleport anywhere you'd like, but you're more than likely not going to be an admin unless you have your own server or if you're doing co-op slash offline mode. If you're playing official, you're not gonna be able to teleport anywhere. So that being said, you are going to need a map room or have you're just going to need to use a map room anyone can use a map room if the other players the owners allow you to use it pretty much or if, they, if it's open but the way the map room works is you need to have those obelisks the obelisks that will apply corruption to you 
it's going to um, let you attune your bracelet to the obelisk. And when you attune it, you can use these little tower beacon looking things. It's going to look exactly the same as the obelisk pretty much. Um, if I can find... Alright, so right here, I can teleport to the ice area if I use this. And there are, I believe, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, there's 10 obelisks in the world. So you can teleport to any of those obelisks. Now, the thing is, you will have to come back to the map room in order to fast travel again. But what you could do is you could technically set map rooms all over the world so that way you or anyone else can use it to teleport wherever they need to be just to make it easier to get around but um that's pretty much it with the fast traveling though there's really no no real option plus it's not too bad to travel around since you can technically climb pretty much anything and everything um but yeah that's the only real source of fast traveling is you have to make sure you have a map room so leveling up in the game isn't bad at all, uh, especially due to the fact that you can change the multipliers of the XP gain. You can change it to where you get a, sh a lot of XP, or you can change it to where you get a very small amount of XP. The developers did end up nerfing how much XP you do get for exploring new areas, but that's not necessarily the only way of getting XP. So another really good way, or main, some of the main ways of getting XP is definitely doing your journeys. So if you do your journeys, obviously mine hasn't all been completed yet, but if you do your journeys, then you'll be getting a ton of XP. And the thing is, the more, the higher the journey chapter is, the more XP you'll get. So because the higher the chapter, the more difficult the um, quote unquote content is on that journey, that specific journey. And then, um, yeah, so you want to definitely get your journeys done. And then exploring, like I said, is a really, really, really good way of getting XP. So if you can explore pretty much everything in the map, then you'll get a lot of XP. Um, I don't have all the explorations done on this character. I do have it all done on my official server, but yeah, I just, it, it takes a bit of time. It, it takes some dedication and getting all of the locations discovered but um that's pretty much the best ways of leveling up is doing your journey and exploring you can also you can sorry i'm hiccuping you can also kill enemies to get a good amount of xp as well or craft too so those are some d other decent ways of getting xp so a few good reasons on why having thralls is very 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 important is one thralls can increase the crafting speed of either your weapons or your armor or your potion making whatever it is that they're stationed at they will make it faster and it also depends on how high of a level they are if they're of tier four or a named um a named thrall which makes them a tier four thrall they will make it a lot faster than all the other thralls if they're a tier one they'll still make it faster than normally but it's still it's just not going to be as good as the second third or the named and then not just that but name are uh, thralls in general i believe it's just up to the third tier three thrall and then a uh, tier four thrall the name thralls can make exceptionals and flawless gear and weapons so that's why it is important to try to get yourself a tier three or four thrall because they will be able to make you those specific flawless and exceptionals now, having, if you're at a, I believe, an armor crafting station or a weapon crafting station, blacksmith, it depends on the type of thrall you have in order for them to make those specific weapons or items or armor. So, especially for the armor crafting, if you are looking for specific, let's say I go to this armor's bench and let's say I wanted to make, I guess, the black hand trousers set. If I wanted to make the black hand set, then I would need this specific um, this specific armorsmith. I would need a black black hand armorsmith. Then, but if I had a different blacksmith or armor maker, then or a different thrall, 
then I wouldn't be able to make this type of armor. I would be able to make a different set of armor. And it pretty much just that's pretty much just how those type of thralls work. But for everything else, for example, the furnace or the cauldron or the tannery or the workbench, all those don't really matter on the type of thralls you have. It's just if you have them at tier four or the name thralls, I mean, if you have them as a name thrall or tier three, then they'll be able to make it faster and a better version of the items you're making. So the way you obtain thralls is you need a wheel of pain. You can have a lesser or a greater or the middle of it. I don't exactly remember what the middle one was, a medium uh, wheel of pain. But the way you make it is you would have to go to your feet and then you would have to unlock it. So you can unlock it here and in the survival area, just right here, lesser wheel of pain. Or you can go all the way to the survival and then go all the way down and unlock thrall taker. And then you can get Wheel of Pain and then Greater Wheel of Pain. So that's what it's called, Greater or Wheel of Pain. So you would need to make sure you craft yourself a Trenchian and Bindings. So if you're using the Lesser Wheel of Pain, that's all you can get is a Trenchian and Fiber Bindings. If you have the Wheel of Pain, you can get Rawhide Bindings, Torture's Work Table, and Iron Trenchian. And if you have a Greater Wheel of Pain, you get the you also get the Torture's Work Table as well as the leather bindings and steel truncheon. So the way that that works is you would want to make sure you use a truncheon on a thrall. I would show you, but I don't have a truncheon on me. But you would use a truncheon on the thrall. It's not going to kill them. You just use it to knock them out. And then after you do that, you would equip your bindings on your hotbar. Make sure you have your, your bindings on your hotbar. And then you would lasso them pretty much. You would tie them onto the bindings and then drag them to a wheel of pain like this this is a greater wheel of pain so all you would do is you would just take them bring them and then come down here this is a good spot I would recommend players coming to for um, capturing thralls if you are up north you would probably want to set shop at the entrance of New Asgarth and then make sure you do get like a, a bedroll as well so that way when you have a bedroll, if you end up getting killed, you just respawn here and then you can just go back and get your stuff. And then also with the Wheel of Pain, you do have to make sure you do feed them. And then after that, you're just you're just breaking them pretty much. You're just breaking them so that they become your, your slaves or your workers, whatever you want to call them. You'll know when they become uh, broken. You can, you'll see a gray thrall. So if, if you look at the right side, under crafting it shows one two three four it'll look just like that so it'll show a picture a little icon like that and then all you have to do is just click on them and then they will be they'll they'll be taken and all you do is just you can put it in a box next to you lock it because they do weigh 50 pounds so if you don't have the encumbrance to carry all that then just put it in a box near you and then just go back and forth to your base and that's pretty much it with how to gather your thralls and whatnot like I said thralls are going to be very very useful and important when it comes later in the later game so this is going to be the last thing I'm going to be I guess giving you guys a tip on is make sure you do craft yourself a bedroll because bedrolls are going to be very 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 useful when you're traveling around and doing whatever so you can either make the fiber bedroll or you can make a hide bedroll. So the way you make your bedrolls is you just go all the way to the crafting in your hand crafting. And then this is what the fiber bedroll looks like when you're crafting it. It requires three twine, two branches, and six plant fibers, which is all very, very, very easy to get. Or you can make the hide one, which is going to be a rolled up hide bedroll. And that requires three hide, which is very easy to get as well because you can get it from rabbits, you can get it from deer, you can get it from any, any, any small animal that, or any animal that has fur on them pretty much. Not a gorilla because they have thick hide or elephants. But the reason why you want to have a bedroll is because if you do die, you want to make sure you're, you don't want to be too far away from your items of where you died at. And you don't want to be too far from whatever you're trying to get to. Like if you're at a dungeon, you want to make sure you put your bedroll at the entrance, near the entrance. Because sometimes you can't put your bedrolls 
too close or you can't even put it inside or wherever so I, I would recommend highly recommend making a bedroll for yourself when you're traveling and then have an actual bed at your base and then another thing is you want to make sure you do have water skins don't make just one water skin you want to make sure you make multiple water skins because if you don't have the multiple water skins i'm pretty sure they made it to where water skins give you very low amount of thirst increase so you would i would highly recommend making like five or even ten uh, sealed water skins until you're able to make something like uh, iced tea or some other type of beverage that gives you more um, thirst recovery but that's pretty much it with this whole beginner's guide video i hope this helped you guys at all and if it did go ahead and leave a like comment subscribe if you have any questions or concerns about anything let me know down in the comment section i will also be posting more videos for conan as well and i will also be posting somewhat of a tutorial on how to build the castle or quote unquote castle that i made um as my main base and i'm also in the process of making other pretty neat bases as well so if you guys are looking into that then go ahead and hit that sub button and i will see you guys again this is all day and day one on the ps4 have a good day good night and peace